In order to determine the concentration of an unknown base, you'll recall I used a standardized solution of acid, which gave me a precise knowledge of how many moles of acid I added to that base. And I brought it just to the neutralization point so that I had a relationship between the moles of acid that I used and the amount of base that I had in my unknown solution. Just quickly, let's review what that would look like. Again, let's suppose that I have an unknown amount of base in here. The purple color indicates that I have a basic solution. And if I have a known amount of acid and a known amount of volume, and I bring it just to the titration, just to the equivalence point, we would then know the relationship between the amount of acid I added and the base. Well, that same principle can be used in a different type of a titration experiment in what's referred to as a redox titration. In the experiment I was just describing, I'm using my acid in a sense as a proton source. I have a known amount of H plus ions that I'm adding to probe my concentration of base. In a redox reaction, I'm using a standardized solution of a material that can potentially deliver electrons or will remove electrons to accomplish the same end. Once again, the principle is the same. If I know the amount of my titrant, then I'm able to determine the concentration of my unknown. So let's do an example of a redox titration. First of all, let me again walk you through what we just talked about, but maybe in cartoon form here. The general principle of a titration experiment, if I have my titrant, if I have a known concentration of my titrant and a known volume, I know the moles that I added. If I know then the relationship between the moles that I add of my titrant and of the material that I'm probing for, and I use, and I know that by knowing carefully where the end point is in my titration, then I know how many moles of my unknown I have. So in this example, we're going to start now with 20 milliliters of an unknown concentration, so that's what we're going to be looking for now, of an iron 2 sulfate solution. And the way we're going to determine the amount of iron in this sample is by titrating it with a standardized solution of cerium-4. This particular example, we have 0.107 moles per liter of a cerium-4 solution. And it turns out that this will take 5.72 milliliters to exactly reach our end point. Okay, so the, the question again is, what is the concentration of our unknown solution? Now, the first step, remember the crucial link here, is the chemistry. What's the relationship between the cerium-4 and the iron-2? Now, I'm saying cerium-4 and iron-2, where do I get that from? What we need to do is break this down into the individual ions that make up these materials. So let's look at that quickly. And that's going to give us our relationship. So if I break that into its, its constituent ions, we have cerium-4, uh, ammoniums, two, two ammonium ions, six nitrate ions coming from the ceric ammonium nitrate, and then iron and sulfate ions. The crucial thing going on here is going to be a reaction of ceric 4, cerium 4, and iron 2 to give us cerium 3 and iron 3. So look what's going on. The cerium 4 is acting as the oxidant. It's taking an electron. It's being reduced, in other words, to give us cerium 3. The iron 2 is acting as the reductant. It is being oxidized to iron 3. Crucial point here is that since only one electron is involved in either of these processes, it takes one cerium-4 to react with one iron-2. So our relationship is one to one. If I know the number of moles of cerium-4, I know the number of moles of iron-2 that I have reacted it with. So what's our strategy? Once again, restating the moles of cerium-4 I know will be equal to the moles of iron 2 that I'm probing for. I know this relationship again. This is just restating what we said on the last page. So if that's true, if I can determine the moles of cerium 4, I will then know the moles of iron 2. I sound a bit repetitive, huh? All right. So how do we determine the moles of cerium 4? The uh, volume times the concentration is what gives us that. As you'll recall, 
Notice our units of liters cancel, and that gives us, in this case, 6.12 times 10 to the minus fourth moles of cerium-4 that I used, and therefore 6.12 times 10 to the minus fourth moles of iron-2 consumed. In other words, iron-2 in our unknown solution. So, I know then the amount of moles in my unknown solution. I know the volume of my unknown solution. The missing link again is simply concentration, and that's what we're probing for. I know that the volume times the concentration, whatever it may be, must equal 6.12 times 10 to the minus fourth moles. So solving for x then by bringing this over to the denominator, x is 0 0.0306 moles per liter of iron sulfate in our unknown solution. So once again, we've used a titration experiment to link the number of moles of our titrant to the number of moles of an unknown material. This time using a source of electrons, if you will, rather than a source of protons.